It's fall, y'all, and us fall girlies, we love the smells of fall. We love our pumpkin spice. We love our vanilla coffee. We love our cinnamon, but what we don't love in the fall is B.O., you guys. Just because it's not summer anymore doesn't mean we don't still have B.O. We do, and that's why you need Lumi. Lumi is a whole body deodorant that is seriously safe to use anywhere on your body. Your pits, your underboobs, your thigh folds, your belly buttons, your butt cracks, your private areas, and your feet. Lumi was created by an OBGYN who saw firsthand how normal BO was being misdiagnosed and mistreated. And it's clinically proven to block odor all day and control odor for up to 72 hours. Lumi now has a starter pack that's perfect for new customers. So it comes with a solid stick deodorant, a cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice like the mini body wash and the deodorant wipes, and free shipping. And as a special offer for my, li- offer for my listeners, new customers, get 15% off all Lumi products with our exclusive code PINKSHADE. So if you combine that uh, 15% off coupon with the already discounted starter pack, that equals 40% off their starter pack. So use code PINKSHADE for 15% off your first purchase at LumiDeodorant.com, L-U-M-E-D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T.com, LumiDeodorant.com. Use code Pink shade and you're going to get 15% off and the starter pack is already reduced. You guys, I love the deodorant wipes and I love the all over deodorant. You need to try both of these things out and let me know what you liked. Thanks. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Pink Shade. It's Monday. Mugshot Monday. Malfeasance Monday. Meatloaf Monday. It's time for Life After Lockup. Keisha, how's it going? It's going. It's going. Girl, people were not happy that we didn't have a deal last week. I think I saw something like that. Uh, You guys, it was our birthday. We had to give ourselves a break. And here's the thing, y'all. We so didn't look cute that day at all. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Did we both have on pajamas? I think we had on sweatshirts. We were just like, just come as you are. Yeah. I mean, there is yeah. video of it, but it is not for public consumption. No, that Mm-mm. is like something that you blackmail someone with. Like, <laughs> don't forget Thank I you. got this video on how you look now. Don't make I've me got... publish it. So, Keisha, yeah. I think every time I see you, you look the same. You look like picture perfect, makeup, everything, hair, everything perfect. I've never really ever I'm seen sure you the... look bad. Yes, you ever. have. I mean, you've seen me look like straight out of the bed, like I've been punched in both eyes. You have <laughs> seen me look like absolute dog shit. Trust and believe. You have. All right. What does your shirt say? It's a Twilight t-shirt. Oh, Twilight. Okay. All I could see was W-I and then I saw the G. I was like, does her shirt say wig? <laughs> oh, okay. All right. That's your guy. Now, it wouldn't be past, past me to wear a shirt that just said wig. Wig. Mm-hmm. And I'd be talking about Kim Zosiak. Bye, wig. Bye, wig. Bye. Bye. I know you talked about Kim on your podcast last week. The Libra Lounge of Keisha is her podcast, y'all. What um what was what's happened? Is there a development with them that I missed? They just refused to get a divorce. Yeah. They just I I don't just let it go. I mean, even the house is tired of seeing them. The house is just like, look, yeah. this is a barren house. Just you and your kids, pack up the shit. The love is gone and move on out of here. Yeah, I saw she was at the jail. She she actually just posted a picture of herself with her real hair. She's like, real hair, don't care. And there's nothing better than real hair. I'm like, when like 99% of the rest of your body is fake, I guess having real hair is a big achievement. So I think her hair is just like, it's like a dirty blonde and it's probably just like straight. I don't think it's any, it's just good. She has good hair. I don't know why she wears a fucking wig. I don't either. Especially the bad ones that she used to wear. They were so bad. Look like plastic. the, in the beginning, yeah, synthetic yeah. wigs all the way. Uh, yeah, those oh. were poor times. <laughs> those were uh, Big Papa times. That um, was I didn't realize how much money Big Papa really had times. I will tell you that this week on our program here, Life After Lockup, they were spent quite a bit of time in Alexandria, Virginia. Quite a bit of time with uh, Key Rock and Brittany. Brittany. 
Mm-hmm. Every yeah. time it would say Richmond, Virginia, I'm like, that is one mile from my house where they are. <laughs> what are you talking about? They are not well, in Richmond. They were that close to you and now they're that close to me. And we didn't even, I didn't even know. I mean, you have a better chance now that they really live there of seeing them. I had, if I would have known, and by the way, when we get to it, I went on Facebook and looked up the person that the girl that owns Christopher's flowers. Cause when Dave ever sends me flowers is from Christopher's flowers. Oh really? So I went and looked it up cause that girl looked like she might be about my age. And I have like six Facebook friends that are in common with her. That are people are my really good friends. So maybe I'll have oh, to do really a little close. investigative journalism. That would, uh, I think that, I, I don't think I fancy any of the places that Brittany and Key Rock would be at. So there goes that. We'll have to see when they film next. Cause you'll be like, Oh my gosh, I go to that place all the time. I, I'm guarantee. I guarantee you that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> okay. No, no, I don't think so. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <sighs> you know. Well, let's get started with our program here. It's Life After Lockup, Season 5E, Episode 4. Can you hear the people in the background talking? Should I tell them to be quiet? Can you, can you see Sushi in the background? I can see Trying sushi. to jump on a damn pillow with his diaper on and... But listen, can you hear them? No. No. You can't hear oh, Okay, I can I can hear Dr. Jimmy now. But that's Dr. Jimmy. He can say whatever the fuck he wants, whatever the fuck he wants. He saves lives. He could come be on the podcast right now if he wants to. He does save I lives. I mean, he can he can replace you right now and we can have a whole new podcast him and I. He's a wannabe comedian. Hold on one second. Do y'all mind just keeping it down just a smidge in the kitchen? Can y'all just keep it down a smidge in the kitchen? Uh, I would love that. Uh, I, okay. She said maybe. Okay. Um, the name of this episode is Red Flags and White Dresses. And I really feel like we've had an episode named Red Flags and something, something before. Because it's love after lockup. So, of course, I'm sure several episodes have had the title of Red Flag something. Yeah. It, it's yeah, a yeah. show all about nothing but red flags. I know. It seems like every episode yeah. could be red flags and something. It really could be. Yes. So, well, let's start out with Bianca and Daniel. Uh-huh. So we open up with he's asleep on the couch and mm-hmm. she comes in there and is like, why are you on the couch? And um, she goes, you know, I had a bad day yesterday and I'm sorry. I just wanted to have a drink and have fun with your cousin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Too much fun with that cousin. Yeah. And she says, you know, in prison, I feel like maybe you led me on. Um, and he's like, what are you talking about? And he, he's like, I've been out of prison for like two days. And she goes, yeah, yeah. You, you've been out for a few days and I don't have a ring. Okay, he's also been out two days. You've already tried to have his child and you've already tried to get him drunk. Right. So we're not off to a very, very good start here, Bianca. Not mm. not, not at all. Not Mm-mm. at all. And um, she goes, I don't have a ring. And, you know, maybe you didn't exactly say that's what was going to happen, but that was expected. And like we did that paperwork to get married in prison. And he goes, yeah, I know I agree to that, but that that was a mistake. I'm glad it didn't go through. And then his talking head, he goes, you know, shit hitting the fan right away with her is just really yeah. not a good sign. Yeah. I mean, including it's been two, two or three days and she still hasn't washed her hair. She's still resting on the dry shampoo she used last week to get her through this week, too, because she's looking worse and worse and worse. There's no dry shampoo in the world that's going to fix that situation. There's no. Oh. It's 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 we're past dry shampoo. We're past. Oh, OK. It, it's oh, not going to help. She needs to do. She needs to do something. I mean, she she needs a SOS hair wash. She needs a little sprucing up. She does. And so he goes, you only talk about marriage. Is that what is going to make you feel secure? And then he goes, is that what's going to make you feel secure? Tell me about that. This is a man that's been in a lot of therapy and a lot of AA. Yes. He's like, tell me, tell me more about that. Yeah. I And I like he does not like um, bow down to her. He calls Mm-mm. her out on her shit. And he's like, you know, when he says he's not going to do something, he's like, I'm not going to do it. He's like, these are I'm my boundaries. I'm not making you coffee. Yeah. I'm mm-hmm. not. No. So now we go round 20 on the coffee situation. Um, yes. And she goes, you just have to understand that like little things will make me feel appreciated. And he goes, are you talking about the fucking coffee again? <laughs> she can't let it go. It's and he like goes, coffee gate 2024. And he goes, come on. I'm not, I made you breakfast. I'm not going to do everything. And she goes, right. well, I mean, it was like first thing in the morning and then like, you wouldn't even get me coffee. And he, and he goes, are we already on this? Like, this is a power trip. And, and, and most people don't like for someone else to even make their coffee. Cause I don't feel like someone can make my coffee like 
I like it. I know this morning, Dave and I, I made two cups of coffee and I go, I'll bring it to you. What do you want in? He goes, I'm going to make it myself. Like he didn't want me to yeah, make it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like even if I tell a person exactly what to put in it, it's still not going to be right. So I just rather do it myself. I completely agree. Yeah. So she goes, you know, you can show me you love me. And it starts with the little things. He goes, um, you can walk on your own. And then, and she's, she goes, I mean, and she starts to laugh and then she starts to talk again. And he goes, Hey, listen, listen. And he raises yeah. his voice to like talk over her. Mm-hmm. He wasn't yelling at her. He just was no. like, listen. And she goes, yeah. Oh my God, babe, don't yell at me. I will just <laughs> shut down. Like, this is the dumbest conversation. Please don't raise your voice at me. We won't be together. Like, I can't take that. We won't be together. Okay. So, she's so confused. She's like, I want to be pregnant, but I want to be an alcoholic. I want us to be married, but I also want us to break up. So what is it? What, what, what is it? She needs to have a talk with herself before she has another conversation with Daniel. You're exactly right. And he goes, um, when she goes, um, we won't be together. I can't take it. And he goes, okay, babe. So that's not on me. That's on you. And so we don't need to be together, but you want to get married. Yeah. Um, just, mm -mm. in the talking head, she goes, um, you know, um, I have a timeline and I'm realizing shit's a lot harder than I thought it would be. I mean, I don't know what she thought. She is only 12 years old. So, I mean. <laughs> so a 12-year-old has lower expectations. Like, he legit just met his probation officer. You know what I mean? Barely. Yes. Barely. Like. He's only slept in a bed one night. One night. We have seen one and night. And now he's on the couch. So we're on day three. So he yeah. goes, he goes, people yell. And she goes, but it's over something so stupid. And he goes, yeah. So in her talking head, she goes, I've been in relationships where it starts out with yelling and then it goes to throwing things and then it's full on abuse. And I know this is a huge change for him because he's used to being around dudes, but he's not respecting my boundaries. I mean, literally, he did not, like, he did not yell at her. But she crosses her own boundaries. <laughs> right. So, sure. I mean, he, if he is crossing boundaries, he's leading, you're leading him to do that. But he's totally nice, sticking up for himself. He, I'm telling you, he has been in, he, he's been in treatment. He has been in AA. He has been therapy and counseling. He is like, this is my boundary and I'm setting it and I don't care. So, um, so she goes, I mean, you know, if you're making breakfast, you can just get my drink. And he goes, he goes, no, I was setting the bar because mm-hmm. if I do that for you every time, you will expect it every time. I'm not your slave. I made breakfast. I'm not going to get your coffee and do the dishes because I'm not your housekeeper. I mean, she, uh, he's, here, here's the thing. He he's is, he is leaping right. way too, he, he, he is right, but he's also leaping way too far over to. I think so too, because I yeah. feel like if you're not working, and I'm supporting you. You can also wash the dishes and make the breakfast. Well, what else ran, are you doing? We ran you know into that I mean? with Hannah and Nick on Love is Blind. Same thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I get it. But now I think he's just pissed off at this point. Now he's like, you were making me draw my boundary even harder. And probably yeah. in his mind, he's like, all right, tomorrow if I make breakfast, I'll bring you some coffee. And like, mm-hmm. ha ha, I'll be fine. But now right. she's digging her heels in about it. And he's realizing mm-hmm. I'm 31. She's 23. And this is what's happening. You know? Yes. So um, she goes, we're, we're um, just getting to know each other right now. And in a healthy relationship, we need boundaries. But if it's not a relationship, if you can't do things that make the other person happy, like make my coffee. Um, and he says, don't rely on me to do things for you and make you happy because that won't work. So, he, I mean, this is, I'm telling you, this is all coming from his work that he's done on himself. And she goes, so if we get married and have kids, then I just do everything because you're just not going to do it. And he goes, that's, that's, that. he goes, that's different. He goes, you have legs that work. <laughs> um, and um, she goes, this is a red flag and I have nothing more to say to you. I have to be done with the conversation. And he goes, um, well, what if I say, I'm sorry. And you say, you're sorry. And then they kiss mm-hmm. and make up. But believe me when I tell you, Coffee Gate 2024 is not over. It's not. And I have some bad news for you guys. What is it? So she posted. She, she's pregnant with time. twins. <laughs> well, she most definitely is pregnant. Really? Yeah. Is it Daniel's baby? And I don't know if it's Daniel's or if it's from, you know, the rage fuck with Robert. <laughs> Allegedly. 
allegedly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're also filming for another season. If they're filming, then it's definitely his baby. Mm -hmm. Oh, I bet his parents are going to be mad, 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 mad. mad. I'm like, Daniel, why, 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 why? Now you're trapped. Now you're trapped. But she doesn't look better with a little bit of baby weight on her. I mean, she's not announcing the baby that she's pregnant, but she's hashtagging baby and she clearly looks pregnant. You don't think she's just sticking her stomach out to get attention? No, 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 no. You know, a woman has that pregnant look about her. Yeah, it's sometimes in the nose. Yeah, yeah, she's a little bit thicker, and, and it's 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 pregnant. She's it's, yeah, she's he did it. He well, well, he, maybe, it, but maybe it's been a year. Or plan just got her pregnant. I think she needs longer than a year. That bitch well, needs like five years to grow up. Maybe they realize that Plan B costs a lot of money, and it's not effective birth control. <laughs> Yeah, because that's why they have birth control, you know. Right, right. So, um, okay. And so in the talking head, he goes, I don't know what's going on here. I think there's something more bothering her that she's not telling me. Like, I don't know. And he says, all right, you know, Robert's here. I'm going to go. I'm going to go see Robert. Mm -hmm. So he leaves. Bianca FaceTimes Andres. And, and his she's hair. Like, and all his hair. His George Michael Wham hair. I, John Cougar Millencamp. All, all of the hey, 80s hairdos. All put it to one child. There yeah. it is. I want to yeah. say like, like not Robert Palmer, Robert Plant had that big hair. It's any kind of like pompadour, like, like Farrah Fawcett wings on a man. That's yeah. how yeah. it is. I mean, but he's got thick hair. I'm not, he's got I'm not gorgeous hair. On him. He's got, he's got good hair. There's just the haircut. That's the problem. It's gorgeous. And so um, she goes, Andres, will you come visit me? And he goes, yeah, girl, I'm there. Are you paying? I'm coming. Right. Right. And um, she goes, you got to come here and help me talk some sense into this man. So yeah, that's going to work. Yeah, sure. He's going to listen to this guy. And she says, you know, I went out to get a drink with his cousin and he got upset and that his mom got upset and he's just not understanding me. Like people my age want to drink. Let's get real. Um. And then she tells Andre, so like, he doesn't want to get married right away. And Andre goes, oh, that's fucked up. And she goes, I know, and I have no one out here. Well, you've only been there a week. And he's been out three days. And he's been out three days. You you haven't had time to maybe go to a hair salon. Start there. You can make new friends. You get your hair washed. Get a blowout. Maybe get your nails done. Maybe they'll put a little makeup on your face. Sprucing you up a little bit. Start just little, there. Just a little color on your cheeks. Girl, because iron tablets. That's Instead of thinking <laughs> about plan B, she needs to worry about a multivitamin with extra iron in it. Because uh, You're so mm -hmm. right. You're so right. So um, now Rob and Daniel sit outside to talk. And I got to say, Daniel is, you know, in the top of good looking people we've had on he's the show. Cute. I mean, he's like, I would look at him out in public. Like he's, cute. yeah, I like yeah. him. Yeah. So they sit to talk. Um, and Daniel goes to Rob, he goes, Hey, what went down at the bar, bro? Like what, mm -hmm. what happened there? And Rob goes, yeah, at the bar, Bianca flat out said she had a drinking problem. And he goes, well, wait, 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 wait. How many drinks did you have? And how many drinks did she have? He goes, I had two drinks. She had three drinks. And so Daniel goes, so she told you she has a drinking problem, but then she continued to drink. And he goes, yeah, like, I understand why she doesn't want to give it up and everything, but she probably should give it up. And Daniel and goes, then he yeah. didn't count the shots that they took. Yeah, I think that some of that was water. I think probably, I think if I had to guess, if we're believing mm -hmm. what's on our screen to be true, I think probably Rob had a drink and a shot and she had two drinks and a shot. Two drinks and a shot. Okay. Okay. And then they both had those big things of water, but it's interesting because he's like, um, so you're telling me, she said she had a problem with drinking and then she continued mm -hmm. drinking. How many That's alcoholics what people does, with drinking do? <laughs> how many alcoholics has Daniel met? And being one himself seems like I he mean, would know. I mean, yeah. I mean, cheers. I mean, <laughs> no. So in the talking head, he says, um, you know, I, I'm seeing a lot of red flags in Bianca. Because remember, she just said she mm -hmm. saw red flags about him. Yeah. So then Rob tells Daniel, um, you know, Bianca told me, you know, like, and I, and I, I have a problem with this too, man. Uh, she wants more foreplay. And Daniel goes, wait, she was talking to you about our sex life. What is their sex life? They have known each other two days. And then, but why would you talk to his family member about it? That is something that you should have had with your friend Andres on the phone. That's right. Because y'all know each other and he doesn't know Daniel. But no, you go to his cousin and tell him. 
And but I mean, and he's true. It's right because they were drinking at the bar, and he's like, "Let me just tell you the secret." Yeah. Uh huh. So um, Daniel goes, "She was talking to you about her sex life. That's fucked up." You know, like that, that actually, he goes, that actually makes me upset, dude. Like, you shouldn't yeah. have to hear that about your cousin. And Rob's like, yeah, right. I didn't, I don't want to. And Rob goes, you know, Bianca's thought is that she gave up a lot and spent a lot to be here with you. And I think she thinks you're responsible for her happiness. And Daniel goes, Robert, look, man, I'm scared. I love her, but I am battling a battle. I'm afraid it's going to spiral and spiral fast. It already what? is spiraling. Spiraled into a pregnancy, I guess. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Hopefully things are totally better now. You know, I'm hoping that she stopped drinking. And yes. um, or- it's fall, y'all. And us fall girlies, we love the smells of fall. We love our pumpkin spice. We love our vanilla coffee. We love our cinnamon. But what we don't love in the fall is B.O., you guys. Just because it's not summer anymore doesn't mean we don't still have BO. We do, and that's why you need Lumi. Lumi is a whole body deodorant that is seriously safe to use anywhere on your body. Your pits, your underboobs, your thigh folds, your belly buttons, your butt cracks, your private areas, and your feet. Lumi was created by an OBGYN who saw firsthand how normal BO was being misdiagnosed and mistreated. And it's clinically proven to block odor all day and control odor for up to 72 hours. Lumi now has a starter pack that's perfect for new customers. So it comes with a solid stick deodorant, a cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice like the mini body wash and the deodorant wipes, and free shipping. And as a special offer for my li- offer for my listeners, new customers get 15% off all Lumi products with our exclusive code pink shade. So if you combine that uh, 15% off coupon with the already discounted starter pack, that equals 40% off their starter pack. So use code pink shade for 15% off your first purchase at lumideodorant.com. L-U-M-E-D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T.com. Lumideodorant.com. Use code pink shade shade and you're going to get 15% off and the starter pack is already reduced. You guys, I love the deodorant wipes and I love the all over deodorant. You need to try both of these things out and let me know what you liked. Thanks. Or just said, let, let me just not drink for like a couple of weeks and see how, how, how's it doing and see if she really feels yeah. like she needs it. I mean, there's a lot of ways yeah. you can. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's go to Kim and Joey. All right. Okay. Okay, Kim and Joey. Kim is going wedding dress shopping for the third time. Yeah. We see a lot of wedding dresses. (laughs) Can't you just repurpose one? Yeah, I'm thinking she should have got the two and it says, going to someone said, can you make me my third one out of these two? Yeah. I mean, wedding dresses are pretty expensive. Very expensive. So she's going wedding dress shopping for the third time. We see some funny photos of her. First two weddings. The yeah. first one is like her, like she's like, ah, yeah. like her tooth out and a drink in her hand. And the mm. second one looks like she's getting married on the beach. I think that was the guy with the blonde hair. Uh huh. Um, and she's at the Duchess dress shop in Eden, North Carolina, or maybe it's outside of somebody could tell us. And she meets up with Tatum's toes and they're both like, oh my God, it's so fancy in yeah. here. Like we should it not is. even be in here. We should not be at the, oh, it's so much cuter in person. I'm so nervous. It's hilarious. It's very funny. And again, I'm like, where does Kim get all this money from? Like. Exactly. Where, exactly. Tatum looked good. Tatum looked good. Tatum is cute. Tatum looked really good. I think she took a Xanax before she came. For sure. So she could chill the fuck out. And, you know, hopefully Joey won't whistle at her. Or any she, man at all. She checked to make sure that place had good AC so she didn't have to bring her personal van. Yeah. Yes. I I, I get it. I yeah. get it. So um, in the talking head, Kim goes, Joey, you know, he's the love of my life. And this time is different. And I know he's the right person at the end of the aisle. And I just need to look perfect. So she and Tatum are looking at the dresses and uh, Tatum goes, look, last time I last time I seen you was at the engagement party and I should not have walked out like that. I apologize. I was just very upset. And Kim tells her she loves her. You know, she's her bestie. She's her cousin. And she says, I want to be sure you're comfortable. And I'm sorry that you got put in that position, but I just want us all to mesh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And the talking head Tatum goes, I know the old Joey and he's not trustable. Mm -hmm. So I hope Kim sees something in Wait, him. Wait, trustable? She really said trustable? Trustable. He's not trustable. Is that a word? Because that sounds like some shit I would say. 
It's not you know a word. To make up a word. It is it's not a, a word. And earlier she said, "Last time I seen you." So Tatum, Tatum's country, y'all. She's country. Um, yeah. And she said the old Joey is not trustable, and she hopes Kim sees something in him that she doesn't. So she's trying to be positive. She's like, maybe there's something right. there that I, she I just don't know has. What. I, we don't we don't we, see it. <laughs> no, we have not seen anything. And I'm talking about from the looks to lack of jaw, lack of personality, spending habit, uh, quite a few. Don't things. forget the thing you always say about him. Oh, and them women hip, them woman hips, them Bree. He is ready for a baby. Maybe he's gonna carry Bianca's baby. I don't know because <laughs> they are ready. I mean, I've never looked at his jug, so I don't know if they're ready for a milking or not. But I'm gonna leave Joey alone. No, I mean, that's his, his hips don't lie. <laughs> so <laughs> Kim comes out. He, yes, uh, she comes out in a dress that's really pretty. It needs to be let out a little, but it, but yeah. it is really pretty, and. Uh -huh. Kim's like, you know, we just have to think about Joey. This is all new and different for him. You know, the the life, the kids, you know, being out of prison, being sober. Like, it's all new and different. And as long as he stays sto sober and is taking the steps he needs to, I just really want it to work with him. And then they joke, like, either third time is the charm or three strikes and you're out. You know? That was funny. That was actually funny. Although I got to say, if three strikes and you're out, I'm going to give it one year till she's got a new man. Yeah, she's the type of woman she can't be without a man. She said she hadn't been out with, without a boyfriend since she was in kindergarten. I can believe it. Yeah. Yeah. So she comes out in another dress and it is. She looks great. Really gorgeous. Yeah. She looked like a totally different person. I'm like, it was, it made her body look just like everything was put snatched together. And, yes. Snatched and yeah, she looked good. Now, I don't think sleeveless is the way to go, but that, okay. that silhouette of that dress was great. I think she could yeah. add on a sleeve or like one of those little, um, what do you call it, little bolero jackets that is like sheer that would kind of add something. She ain't going to do that. I know. I know. Mm -hmm. these, these ladies don't do that. But the dress itself, if her looked great. Looked great. Yes. Anyway, she says, um, you know, I'm so excited to get married to Joey and everything, but you know, I got to get divorced first. And girl. I'm still, Tatum, I'm still technically married. And Tatum goes, girl. Why are we here in this right? fancy shop? <laughs> she said, oh, my God, you need to get a lawyer ASAP. Do you yeah. need a drink? Let's get a drink. Speaking of Joey right? being sober, let's all get a drink. <laughs> so she says, you know, I thought I could just go online and do it like I did the last time. But things have changed. It's not as easy as mm -hmm. I thought. Well, probably because the guy is it probably. It was COVID. It was COVID. And then also, I think that guy, the second husband who she's got the second kid with, Mm -hmm. I think he's not going so easy. He's not just going to sign something. No, he's still like, he's texting her and stuff about getting back together. So yeah. he's still interested in her. Yeah. So um, she goes, and you know, Joey, he's always thought, you know, that um, Kayler Kyson, whatever, the, Kyler Kaysen, whatever, whatever that, one of the K's, one of the K, yeah. Kyler, Kyler Kaysen, Kimberly, <laughs> we, we, he thought he was the dad. And so, um, you know, he keeps asking me about the DNA results. And I'm like, no, it hadn't come in yet. I told him I hadn't gotten the results, which probably means she has gotten, She's the, gotten result. the results. Yeah. And she goes, you know, and what if it affects my kid with this information? Well, you should have thought about that oh, before you put it on TV. Yes, that is very true. Yep. Mm -hmm. And what if it affects my divorce? It could. I don't, is Couldn't that, it, is that man, say, is the dad, the, the father of both those kids or two different dads? He's, it's, it's supposed to be one dad. Right. So why would it matter in her divorce if the older kid is Joey's? Because the second divorce we're trying to do is the dad of the second kid. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's. it's I second. thought they both were the second dad's kid. That's okay. The maybe they're, maybe kid. they've got the same dad. Yeah. Okay. So if one kid is not his, then yes, it affects your divorce because I think so. Well, too. it affects everything. It affects the dad that he. Yeah. Ever, I mean, even though we really don't know his dad, it doesn't seem like. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it's, the, it's it's a uh, it's gonna fuck up a lot of stuff. So I think she and then she goes, he's gonna be so mad. So is he gonna be so mad because Kyler Case and Kimberly is not his yeah. child, or he's mm -hmm. so mad because she's still married, or what? All of it. It's a lot of stuff he could be mad at. So, but she, if she just buys some new rims, he'll be completely fine. 
we're gonna we're gonna get those rims for your car, baby. He, 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 uh, yes. I'm gonna get you a fuzzy steering wheel cover, and yes, we're gonna do it. it. We're gonna do it. Mm -hmm. yep. I'm gonna get you some of those balls that hang off the back of the car to yep. make you look real cool. Real um, mainly in the car pickup line with all mm -hmm. the other moms. Mm -hmm. yes. And she says, you know, I don't like it when he hides things for me. So I do need to tell him. I do. And Tatum goes, do you feel like he's pushing you to do a lot of things? And she goes, yeah, I do. And Tatum goes, but then what if you get married to him and then he takes all your shit? I mean, that is, I mean, we know he likes to take your debit card and do whatever the hell he wants to with it. So, I mean, got, Tatum's he, got points. He's got to get a job. Can he work at Tatum's toes? Can he check people in for the pedicures? I you know. He, it's probably, he, did, he doesn't need to be around that many women. No, mm -hmm. he doesn't at all. Mm -hmm. He's not very trustworthy. Okay, let's go on to um, Tenny and Rob. Now, again, mm -hmm. under Rob's name, it says tarp and supply worker. But again, on this episode, he says he does pre-safety inspections for trucks. Is it at a tarp and supply company? We don't know. Maybe. Okay. So I'm surprised Rob, no one has like written you and told you. I know. Can somebody find that out and tell me? Mm. So Rob goes to work with his buddy Trell. He's mm. doing these truck pre-inspections, like I said. Trell's cute. Rob's cute. So okay, I thought for sure that Mary Payne's going to ask me why do both these men have on these do rags? Okay. Well, I just assume because they're working and they're trying to protect their hairdos. Like, I'm always about protecting and protecting your hairdo. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. They're kind of oh. trying to protect the waves and they want it, you know, I thought, about that. A different way. I thought about that the other night, Keisha, because I was like, if I go to sleep with my hair in like a silk scrunchie and then when yeah. I take it out in the morning, it's kind of curly and I can kind of yeah. make do with it for half the day before I have to take a shower. And I was yeah. like, I wonder if I slept with my hair in a bonnet, would it look real cute in the morning? Well, if you don't sleep with a bonnet on, you should be sleeping with a silk pillowcase. 90% of the time I do. Okay, good. good, good I do. Good, and that's mostly good, for my good. wrinkles. Well, it's but good for your hair too. Maybe it's good for your hair too. Yes. Um, and so I don't sleep with my hair in my face because it's bad for your skin. It's bad for your hair. Okay. And your hair goes all over while you sleep and then you sweat. And that's not the problem. Okay. I don't know how people sleep with their hair down. I don't either. With all of their face and you're trying to yeah. turn over. Yeah. But a lot of people do. I, I can't. I don't understand people go work out with their hair down and not in a ponytail. That is the oddest thing to me. I'm like, how do you do that? Like, you just want to sweat on your neck real heavy? Yeah, and it makes you hotter. It makes you hotter. Uh, I don't know. Um, all right. So in the talking head, Rob tells us he has found work. It's just temporary, but he hadn't had a real job in 16 years. And he got real far in a couple of interviews, but then it went to a screeching yeah. halt when they found out he just got out of prison. And he says, before prison, I was a lost cause. But during prison, I enrolled in school and I started all the way back like I was in kindergarten. And then I got my GED. Good for so him. Well, I mean, but you do wonder, like, I wonder if they test them and say, okay, you're at an eighth grade level. So we're going to put you through it at eighth grade. Or if he just said, nope, I'd like to start with um, C spot run. I'd like to start at the beginning. Oh, that is a, that. Hmm. It's interesting why he or started maybe, all the way. Maybe. Or he maybe felt, I don't know. It's a good question. Somebody let us know, because we have a lot of listeners mm -hmm. out there that have been in the prison system themselves or mm -hmm. have a spouse and they know, and they've been in education in the prison systems. You know that yeah. um, producer Ingrid's mother runs a prison band. What Does that a prison band? She's like the leader of a prison band. They go in, they play the instruments and it's a prison band. That's where Ingrid gets it from. I know. That's where she gets it. Yep. Um, not surprised at all. <clears throat> and again, she's not listening. Although she does have a new way she's doing the editing where she has the transcripts because she's trying to find better places for the ads. And okay. maybe she'll search for her name and she can find out when we talk about her. We talk about her all the time. All the time. And now we're talking about your mama. So, yep. um, <laughs> <laughs> so he says in prison, he made a lot of money gambling. Now he's not now talking about the laundry business that he had with his brother that they made so much money. Now, now it's all from gambling. Somebody was lying somewhere. Somebody. It doesn't make any sense because no. I know that he wasn't making that money gambling in prison and giving that to the former girlfriend. They given that to his mom. It sounds like there was like a legit business somewhere or maybe it wasn't legit. It, it, it must not have been legit because he would still be doing it. Right. I would think. <clears throat> so I think it was something a little bit illegal. 
maybe not big illegal, but a little bit illegal. Just a little, just a, a little bit, just a little bit. Um, and he, and so he goes, you know, Teddy got spoiled, you know, being a stay at home mom and buying whatever she wanted. And, you know, I've considered doing things to make fast money, but I, I'm a family man now. I got kids to support and that's not what a man does. I really have a lot of faith that Rob's going to turn out. Okay. I really do. I think so too. I, I really oof, do. But you know, sometimes they let us down, but so far they seem to be doing okay. According to their social media, just like Arthur I'm still sad about it. I'm still sad about it. So, um, Tenny comes to bring him lunch. It looks like she probably does that like every day because before he left yeah. home, he's like, let me know about lunch. So she brings him a little lunch and they sit on the trunk, which is cute. And he talks about, he's going to apply to get his commercial driver's license and it's $5,500 to take the course. And he goes, you know, you've been home That's for a, a year. It's a lot. Well, I, I, mean, I didn't know it costs that much. I'm glad it does. There's a lot of trucks so on the road. I need him to be real safe. <laughs> a lot of damn money i was like That's, shit yeah okay. i mean yeah it's like a semester at college i mean you know yeah yeah or half a semester in college True. so um he says you know you've been home for a year but i do think it's time now you need to get a job and she goes yeah i worked my whole life like i'm not opposed to getting a job i've worked my right. whole life it's going to be a little nerve-wracking to change but i can do it you know and then she says i've enjoyed this break but i'll touch up my resume and i I could probably get a job in two weeks. And we don't know what she did before, but she's like, right. I'm going to touch up my resume and I could probably get a job in a couple of weeks. And he goes, yeah. So for now, like while we're struggling, you know, like call me before you make any purchases. And she goes, I got it. Like, and listen, we've definitely been in that place in our lives yeah. where I'm like, yeah, nobody, you don't do anything until we talk. Yeah. Because yes. we're in a precarious situation here. Yes. You know? We've yeah. all been there. It's yeah. that watch your spending. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, we're, we're in a, we're in a crunch. Something. We're in a yeah. crunch till the mm -hmm. end of the year. Yes. So, um, so when her talking head, she says, you know, I had Cheyenne at age 20 and I was a young single mother. And then didn't Cheyenne's dad die right away? Was it right away? Yeah. Or when she was, mm -hmm. I don't think she was even a year or maybe a year. She told us, but I can't remember, but it was a, a tragedy situation. Yeah. And she said, you know, I was a young single mother. I went through struggles to pay the rent, to keep food in the house. And I've been through it. So I understand. Right. So Tenny tells Rob, she goes, um, yeah, I was going to tell you there were another scene now. And she goes, I wanted to tell you that because he asked how the water park was, which means the production was right. probably like, make sure you ask her how the water park was. And well, um, remember, but they, the timing on it, the editing's on it is bad. Always. Because we already saw them do that. And now he's saying that they had the conversation about the money and she still went out and bought the 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 past. water yeah right yeah so mm -hmm. we'll, yeah we so we're we're supposed to believe that they had the conversation twice but I don't think so right so she goes yeah you know the the pool is really great because it's a pool and it's a water park and so if you buy the season pass for a family of four which we are then you get it for two hundred fifty dollars for the whole season and he stands up off the bed he goes what he goes I told you no purchases over a hundred dollars and you have to tell me he's yeah. not happy but she goes to go to be able to go to the pool and run them around and wear them out i was like okay these are not four-year-olds that you have to run around yeah. to get tired yeah and and here's the thing they probably are not gonna go want to go as often as you think they're gonna want to go they're not going four times a week they got other things to do yeah but also i'm like just bring your get get nehemiah to bring his friends you know um, so anyway, he's mad about that and talking head together, they're singing together and they say they have accounts together. They each have accounts mm -hmm. and they have accounts together, but it's all passwords are the same. Everybody can see it. And they go, and, um, the kids can see it too. Oh, the other day he's like, Oh daddy, today's your payday. I was like, now why you have that, that 11 year old funny. looking at your bank account? That is funny. He's like, you get paid today. He's like, yeah, I do. Thanks. I don't, I, I don't, I don't need my 11 year old to know uh, how much funny. money I make. So, um, she also goes, look, here's the thing. I do like to shop and I do like nice things, but I am a bargain shopper, mm -hmm. but, and we see your closet and everything. And she's like, right. but I mean, I am a bar and I'm, I am, I'm the same way. I like to shop. I, but I, also, yeah. I love a bargain Me too. and, uh, I like to shop a nice things. And that's, she's like, that's true. You know, she's like, that's yeah. true. So she says again, okay, I'm going to, um, I'm going to look for a job. And then, um, cause he got mad about the park. She says, I'm going to look for a job. He goes, Oh, two weeks, two weeks. She, oh, you're so big and bad. Two weeks. You're going to get a job. Right. She goes, I am going to have a job in two weeks. And she goes, why don't you look for a tattoo artist for that goofy ass tattoo? And I'm going to get a job. 
And, and he's like, okay, yep. she goes, now, you, now you've got something to do. You need to research a, a tattoo artist to cover yep. up that goofy ass tattoo. And I'm going to get a job. He's like, uh-huh. And he walks out and slams yep. the door. And she's all this, all of this for a stupid water park pass. Right. Mayor Payne, I don't care if he had to cut his whole arm out off. Mm -mm. You don't come in my house with that woman's picture on your fucking arm. You better have gone to CVS and gotten a flesh colored, match your, match your skin color bandage. Yeah. Yeah. And we have yeah. that on there every time you leave yeah. the house, like you're a burn victim. And I would be okay with that. Say, yeah. People ask, you say you got burned in an accident. I, I can't deal with that. Yeah. Nobody needs but to see I don't what's under see it. His face. No. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. He, he should have turned that into a lion. He could have turned it into a hyena. He had he so much money in prison. He could have gotten covered. Tattoos don't cost that much. No, just a couple pack of ramen noodles. Come on now. Exactly. Okay. Melissa and Louie. Okay. He's all happy and smiley. He's got the ring. He's so excited. Yes. Now remember it was $18,500, which Ooh. is a, good, it's a lot of money. Yeah. Um. Now he's just dying to give it to her. He's like, I'm just dying to give it to her now. Like I'm saying, he's just so happy. Um. And the talking head, he says, you know, um, I'm going to lunch with the Melissa, her sister. Is it Cherie or Sherry? It's C-H-E-R-I. Sherry. And Sherry. Sherry. Now, she's the one that had the white girl dreadlocks for a while that shouldn't have them anymore. No. Mm -mm. Took them out. The other sister has the dreadlocks. Oh, I thought it was Sherry that had the dreadlocks. Mm -mm. Sherry is the one whose ex died of an overdose. And she's got like tats all up to her neck? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So um, they're going to for dad for dad's birthday. And he's excited to go because when there nobody's around, he's going to ask for dad's blessing. Yes. So, so Sherry says... Does dad know Louie's come to lunch? And she goes, yeah, you know, I think we had concerns in the past, but Louie has really proven himself. I think dad really likes him. And How long she, has it been? It's been like over a year, right? I think it's like 18 months. I usually write it oh. down when they say like 18 months out of prison. I usually write it down. But with them, it's been so long. I don't write it down anymore. I mean, we've had like three seasons with them. Yeah. Yeah. And Mary Jane, um, I can't believe you didn't say anything about where he hid that ring. Where did he hide it? I, I was watching it on my computer in a moving vehicle. Oh my! I had two screens it. up, and I was the, we were going down the highway. I was taking notes. He hid it in his denture box, underneath his teeth. You stop it! I have now. I didn't see that because I had it a screen half the yes. size. Yes, that is where he. Had, which means Melissa must look through a lot of his shit, and that would be the last place that she would look. It'd be the last place I look too. But if he has his teeth in, teeth? if he has his teeth in and the denture box is there, she might open it. If she knows it's empty because his teeth are in his mouth. Well, when he showed it, he was getting the teeth out. Stop. Ooh. That. Okay. Disgusting. I'm glad I didn't see that because I don't need to have it's that vision of my, my Louie. Yeah. He's so cute. Yeah. Yeah. It is bad. So she tells us that, you know, she does have problems with really trusting him because guys in the past have betrayed her. And we see all these shots of like her and these guys and her and these guys. And she says, you know, and I really do have trust issues. Like if this guy betrayed me and that guy betrayed me and I thought he was the one, I thought he was the one, what makes it so that Louie, you know, would not Louis do that. Yeah. Um, and then Sherry says, you know, Louie still needs to prove he can stay on the right path. Like Sherry's, she's a hard character. She's not, she's not here for Louie, but she's not as mean yeah. as she was. Okay. I, I don't know about those wine house sisters. That could be pretty rough. But by the way, when Sherry is sitting there talking to Melissa, you're thinking like, why didn't you ask for that nose? I know. Her nose is proportional to her face. It still is yes. Italian. It still is yes. beautiful. Yeah. It would have looked Melissa. completely natural on her face because it's her sister. Well, the thing that she has on her face is quite unnatural. It's, it's really, it is not settled or anything. And you kept saying it's gonna settle, it's gonna settle. Like that shit ain't settling. It didn't settle. It's it's bad. It doesn't it's settle. Mm -mm. So they go meet dad for lunch and they bring him a look, Dad, we got you a gift. It's a blow up girlfriend or whatever, you know, throw it in water yeah. makes girlfriend. Dad is 76 now. And when they first showed him, and then they showed that clip back, I was like, okay, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't remembering him differently because boy, does he look different. Yeah. And then Melissa's like, he looks so skinny. I didn't believe him when I saw him. Like, well, when was the fucking last time you saw your dad? When you said you don't even recognize him, then when was the last time you saw him? When what, was has, the last has, time you saw him? Why has, are you not visiting your 76 year old dad? And then that also begs the question of if it was only a month and he got that thin in a month, um, we know somebody in our lives who 
very quickly in a couple of months span lost 50 pounds and it's pancreatic cancer. Yeah, so, usually I mean, it's because you're very, very ill. If somebody got that thin that quick, something is really wrong. But now really it's wrong. not within them. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. When was the last time she saw her dad? That's was it crazy? That's crazy. Because it wasn't even like, oh, he didn't even do the whole like normally. He wouldn't be like, well, it's great to see you since you hadn't seen your dad in so long. I mean, more, no. most normal parents will be like, they'll call you out. Like, it's been three months. Why haven't you come to see me? Right. He didn't. So, do, but he just looked. He wasn't even his same. I'm gonna grab a bat and beat you. No. He just he, he wasn't like that. No. I don't know. I'm worried. I'm worried too. Yeah. So Louis arrives. He's like, "Oh, so glad to see you." And Dad opens his gift, you know, with the whatever, with the mm -hmm. girlfriend thing in it. And Louis is like, "Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so nervous. Like, I can hardly eat. Right. I'm so excited." So Melissa conveniently walks out with her sister Sherry. Oh, let me walk you out, Sherry. I mean, obviously planned, but whatever. We'll we'll pretend mm -hmm. it wasn't. So Louie is talking to the dad about getting the blessing. And he's like, you know, I love Melissa and I want to marry her. Like I'm ready to propose, but I want to come to you first. And dad right. says, well, you know, I'm very protective of all my daughters. And Melissa is very strong and very independent. And, you know, I want to know if you can keep up with her and keep on mm -hmm. the straight path. And Louis says, yep, I totally have my shit together now, 100%. And then dad goes, I approve. I approve it. You've done the right thing and you can keep up the good work. And he says, thank you to Louie. It's very sweet. And I'm thinking maybe they should hurry up and get married while dad can still walk down the aisle. I mean, knock on wood. I'm kind of wondering if this, is gonna, good. if this is going to be a storyline coming up. Like she's going to find out some bad news about her dad. I mean. Oh, boy. So uh, and then she's going to really lean on Louie and he's going to show her that he could be there for, you know what I mean? Like you can see how. Maybe. It yeah. 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 So at Louie and Melissa's house, she's in the bathtub, you know, in a towel, um, which yes. is stupid. And then mm -hmm. we see, you know, clips of him doing like, everybody wake up. It's time to wake up and do 50 jumps. Yeah. His, you know. Oh, I hate those people. I, I do too. I, I don't know. Mm. All those endorsements from exercise. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. And he is doing these online videos to train people. And she says, you know, I'm first beginning to feel second best to his work. He's always trying to book clients and I'm always waiting for him to pay attention to me. So she tells him he comes in and she's in the fa fake bathtub, whatever. Right. And she's like, um, I'm exhausted. You know, I've worked at the post office all day and then at the bar. And so he has pizza and she goes, I don't understand pizza again. Like if we have five jobs between us, well, why are we having pizza again? <laughs> Well, why didn't you order something? Different. Girl, girl, Uber Eats will come right to your house. Yeah, exactly. When I was talking to my dad tonight, he was like, have y'all ever heard of that thing, Uber Eats? I was like, dad, all of our money goes to Amazon and Uber Eats. That's it. Those two places. Yes, we've heard of Uber Eats. It's, it's new to him. It's new. He was like, those commercials are funny. Um, <laughs> so um, she has a full, full Basically, beat, nice. full makeup. Yeah. In the bathtub. I cannot take a bath with makeup on my face because I sweat. I, I can't do. I, I just do, can't do it. No kind of activity like that where I'm trying to clean. I got to clean yeah. my face too. Yeah. It's staged. It's stupid. Whatever. So she tells him like, you know, you work so much and the training and trying to get new clients and all that just consumes your time. Mm -hmm. And he goes, yeah, I'm saving my money because I have goals. He's trying to be like, you know. Yeah. And he goes, do you think I'm doing all this for fun? She goes, yeah, I do. I think you do think it's fun to go on social media and get people to buy your supplements and get clients. He goes, yeah, because yeah. he's obviously got some sort of brand deal with supplements and probably gets 10% yeah. every time he sells a bottle. So yeah, he is. And, and she, she, I, 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 it's, it's about the girls. That's look, at, look and see how many followers he has on Instagram. I, I would like to know if he's on there and we got like, 1% of those people buying those supplements with his code. Let's let's figure out how so worth his while is. Louis, it's like Louis 90 day or something, isn't it? Love. Mm -hmm. Not 90 day. That wouldn't make sense. After. It's like Louis love after lockup. It has love after lockup in it, which it should. Let's, oh, I can't find them. I know Melissa's is. Melissa love or life after lock up something. Melissa's like old nose. Is that what it is? <laughs> no, it is not. <laughs> Just kidding. All. We know that's somebody else. Just kidding. Okay. Here's Melissa. Okay. Louie. 
You know, she's tagged him in every picture. That's my man. That's my man. Okay. He has okay. 17.1 thousand um, followers. Okay. That's not that many. I mean, obviously it's a lot more than we have, but that is, yeah. mm, he's not, he's not really. She has. She's I mean, got 26. Uh, girl, you better be helping your man get some more followers. Yeah, she should. Most definitely. So. 26 is probably, but I mean, 17 is pretty good. That's but pretty I, good. I don't know if it's, if he has, he is like hashtag ad through Instagram. I bet he's like got a, um, a deal with something at the gym. And if anybody goes to this link and buys it through his gym, I bet he gets money that way. Right. Maybe so. Yeah. Either way, it's money. Either way, it's a little money he's got yeah. coming in addition to working at the pizza place. Right. So when she says, you think I do it for fun? She goes, yeah, I think you think it's fun to go on social media and, and try to get new clients and uh, sell your supplements. He goes, yeah, I'm selling supplements. I'm trying to work. And yeah. he says, um, this is quality time. We could be together right now, but now you're in a bad mood. So yep. this phone she rings, always is. I, well, the, she, the phone rings and he goes, oh, he's like, I got to get this. Cause it's like a class. Yeah, uh, he, she shouldn't have done. He's not at not that, that moment. That. Nope, 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 nope. nope. Mm -mm. And she goes, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's always these like female clients are calling him all the time. Now, why is a female training client calling you at night? Because, you know, Louie, I was doing 14 push-ups and I was wondering, do you think I should do 20? Like, what would be the question? I don't I, That bitch better stay safe. Uh. Like, calling my man, uh, you better go get in the kiddie pool because, you know, now you're over here in the ocean with a shark mm. calling my man, man at night. Like, uh-uh. No. And she's got those two sisters and they don't. They don't mess around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she's super mad. So she throws her washcloth at him and then he throws the pizza box at her. And she's like, you Not know, pizza. she's like, oh, tell Veronica, you get pizza. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and she says, you know, I'm really mad because when he was in prison, I was my only priority and he could talk to me all day and focus on me. And now I'm not a priority anymore. Here we go. Do these bitches ever learn? That's they have all the time in the world in prison. That's they, right. Every phone call that you answer for them is all they have to look forward to other than like outside time. Talking that's to it. a lawyer. That's it. That's it. Yeah. So what do you think oh, is going to happen when the Menendez brothers get out? How long are they going to stay married? Because you those, know, every woman is going to be trying to get at those boys. And they have been in Big since time. 18 and 21. And now they're my age. I, I, I think they should be released. Oh, why do you do? Oh, okay, I think no, I do. I'm happy. I do. That, I'm happy they they are getting released. I am. Yeah, I agree. Okay, let's move on to um, Justine and Michael, and then we. I'm end so with sick of them. I know you are. I know you are. But they're on our TV, so we have to talk about them. Um, and they have a they have a podcast now. Oh, of course they do. Everybody does. Um, what, what's mm -hmm. what what's it called? I don't even remember. How, how to make... my, it's, hard, it's hard to read when your eyes are rolling in the back of your head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Keisha, you're so funny. Okay. Um, Justine and Michael. Okay. So they go to this lawyer's office and they're sitting outside like the conference room. And he's like, oh, this reminds me of those people sitting in there deliberating <laughs> on my case. <laughs> and she goes, okay, I wouldn't know. Okay. <laughs> um, so the talking head, she goes, we have to talk about medical decisions custody situations, financial things. And they're, these are not things we want to talk about, but it has to be yeah. done. And she tells the lawyer, she's like, Hey, you know, nice to meet you. She says, you know, I'm pregnant. It's my fifth child. It's extremely high risk pregnancy. He also has 14 children and, um, and, and a half and a half. A, and we're, a not, half. We're, not, we're not sure. Anyway, she says, um, you know, and in an extreme case, you know, where something happens to me, I don't want to be resuscitated. You know, I want a blood transfusion and all that to save my life. But if there's no chance of survival, I don't want to lay there. I don't want my kids to have to come and see me like that. And he goes, yeah. I don't agree with that. Because what if something changes? They can bring you back. I am Michael in this situation. I'm me, like, me nobody. Too. Me too. Don't, don't cut me off. Yes. Give something me hope. I could, yes. I, I, I can come back. I think I, I think I told James, give me two months. Give me two months and see what happens. And yeah, I don't do just give up on me that quick. And come on in and sit down and talk to me. Make sure my hair looks pretty. Plug mm -hmm. my chin hairs mm -hmm. and don't let me be ashy and put yeah. some kind of stuff on my lips. Yeah, I don't want dry lips. It's gross. Me neither. Mm -mm. So um, I've got my stuff right here. It's my lip stuff. It's, it's, um, important. it's important. It's important. So 
Um, he's like, I just don't agree with all that. And the lawyer goes, okay, well, this is, you know, why you need this. You could do a healthcare directive that says your mm-hmm. exact wishes in all different cases. And she says, well, the other part is custody of my kids, of the kids that we don't share, um, mm-hmm. Manhattan, Manhattan, Barbie, and this other one that's bacon. And she goes, you know, I have three kids. I have two boys, age 14 and 11, that have the same father who's not involved. Mm-hmm. And I have a daughter who's 19. And he says, well, you need to decide what will happen with the minor children. And she says, um, she exp- <clears throat> Explains to us that, you know, Santana has autism and he is high functioning, but Kyle has been with him his whole life and really understands how to deal with him. And she says, well, I'm going to pick Kylie. And he Mm -hmm. goes, he looks at her and he, she goes, I'm in a no win situation. Just give me a chance to talk and explain. And he goes, no, he said, Kylie is a child. You're going to divide up the family. Oh, okay. And she goes, well, let me talk. And he goes, no, you and the lawyer have it all figured out. So he walks out like a big, it was an emotional, I mean, it was an emotional response. I, I she should have warned him. She should have warned she him. She should yeah. have warned him. But mm-hmm. it's just Justine. Of course she fucking didn't warn him. She probably did. Okay. I always feel bad for Justine because you're so mean to her. I don't um, think I'm mean to her. <laughs> I just repeat the shit that she does. And it just it sounds stupid when I say it out of my mouth. She <laughs> does. So in the talking head with production, he says, um, as a father, this makes me feel like I'm not trusted. And if something happened with the kids, of course, I'm going to step up for all the kids. And the talking head cannot do it by himself. No, no he can't even do it with a, with a wife and, and a bunch of 19 year olds running around helping, you know? Yeah. So in the talking head, Justine says the biggest obstacle we have is Michael's lack of patience and lack of patience with Santana. And then of course we see him going, you broke your phone, Mm, punch the wall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Santana needs special attention. And Mm -hmm. because if somebody doesn't do something exactly how Michael wants it, he doesn't react well. And mm-hmm. Kylie is the only one that I know would love Santana like I do, which right. really just touched I my heart. I get that. That I, was sweet. I, I, I totally get it. I got it too. And, and I the, understand what Justine's trying to do. I do too. When she says with the Kylie, Kylie and Michael, because when... You know, Scholar was younger. I probably need to I change my will. I gave her to both my mom and James. You know what I mean? Because I yeah. had the other parent who's alive but had nothing to do with the child. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? I, t- <clears throat> I said, I want y'all both to work together to raise her if something were to happen to me. Yeah. So I get yeah. it. I get what she's I get what she's trying to do. She's doing it all fucked up like. Yeah. She needs to have a conversation. Whatever. So yeah. the, the lawyer says, you know, you can accomplish these goals with a co-guardianship. Kylie yes. would have a voice, but Mike would be, you know, the patriarch of the family. So mm-hmm. Mike walks back in. He goes, I'm sorry that I walked out. I just needed a minute. I needed to take a minute. Mm-hmm. And she says, you know, whatever decision I make, it's going to suck. It's going to suck no matter right. what. And he says, because he said, yeah, I'm going to feel like I lost you. And then mm-hmm. I'm losing the kids. Like I'm losing Mm -hmm. everything. So I think that that. what the lawyer said is they could still all live together under the roof and Kylie could still go to school and all that. But when it comes to decisions for Santana and Bentley, she would be involved. Yeah. And I think that's, yeah. That's a win-win situation for that kind of situation. But by the way, guys, she had the baby. She's fine. Has she had the baby? I don't know. She, when she gets pregnant, she's pregnant for 14 to 19. Two years. She's, yeah. she's an elephant. She's pregnant for she's a like, really long time. I was just time. about to say, she's a fucking <laughs> elephant. <laughs> we, we don't even know how long that woman stays pregnant no. for. It's a while. She likes it. Okay. Brittany and Key Rock. So the Chiron says they're in Richmond, Virginia. They are in Alexandria, Virginia. Okay. Which is, if no traffic occurs, it's an hour from Richmond, but generally it's going to be over two hours. It is not a hop, skip, and a jump. It is not saying Alexandria and Arlington or... Arlington and Washington, D.C. or anything like that. It is mm-hmm. literally a one hour train ride. It is not close. Okay. 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 So that says they're, I don't know why they're trying to fool us with this. So we we're at, playing on the case. She's going to, uh uh. So we're at Coffee's apartment. Now we remember Coffee. We met mm-hmm. Coffee before. This is mm-hmm. Key Rock's mentor who mm-hmm. was in prison with them and then was out and, um, she is not Brittany's aunt. So I don't know no. why Brittany said she had to live with her aunt and get her name on a lease. Mm-hmm. I remember. Because coffee is not related to either of them. No. 
Okay. Just making sure we heard that the right last week. Okay. Yeah, we did. What did you think about Coffee's dogs, Roger and Foxy Lady? So cute. So, 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 so cute. Yes. I really love when people name their dogs things like Roger. That shit is funny. <laughs> you know, it used to piss me off when people would name their um, animals like real human names. Human names, yeah. Because I'm like, you can name them something so much fun. But there is humor in someone who has named their animal a real human. Like, I have a Liam. Yeah, Liam. I didn't give him that name. I was pissed off he came with that. And I'm like, this is a fucking human's name. But I'm like, I can't change his name. He's had it for a year. So now it's funny to me. I'm like, there goes Liam. Yeah. Lord Liam over there. <laughs> yeah. So Roger and Foxy Lady are walking around, <laughs> knocking their food bowls over. Can you, you saw how crowded yeah. that apartment was. And then they Woo! had that blow up mattress. Can Woo! you imagine now they've no. got a, a, two cameramen and a producer and everything in there too? My skin started itching just looking at that. I'm like, I'm breaking out in hives. That is just, that is sensory overload right there. Just too much. Too much. So, um, Coffee's talking to Brittany and it's like, explain to me the situation. And Brittany goes, it's Texas that's denying me. It's not my, Mm -hmm. you know, my my PO here in Richmond. (laughs) Um, and Coffee goes, well, I'm happy to have y'all here. I'd have you here forever and live here forever. I'm so grateful y'all are always cleaning up stuff. And they're like, we can't take this mess. We can't take this mess. So in the talking head, Key Rock goes, yeah, it's crowded in there. Like there's knickknacks yeah. everywhere. I got to do a sidestep yeah. just to get to the bathroom. Like I love her so much. And I'm so grateful that she let us stay there. But we are currently like living off my savings and like something's got to change. Yeah. Okay. So they go to the Beeliner Diner in the Bradley Shopping Center, which is the last place producer Ingrid and I met to have our business lady are business you meeting. Yes. It's a, it's a good spot between where we live. It's right by Ingrid's okay. church. We meet there all the time. Do they have good food? Yeah. It's a diner. Yeah. Okay. yeah it's got, there's a really good um, Hallmark shop there that has Hallmark shop that has like a whole gift section. There's a okay. Michael's, there's a fresh market. There's a Starbucks. I mean, we go there a lot. Okay. You, you uh, should have told the people that next time that Key Rock and Brittany come there, they need to put their picture on the wall. Well, believe me, next time I go there, I'm going to be like, have you seen these two people and hold up my phone and then get the whole story after I call yes. the lady from the floor shop. So yes. they sit down and talk about expenses. Okay. $267 for their phones, $1,400 mm-hmm. rent in a place they can't live to live in mm-hmm. $350 rent to pay to coffee. Now, how long have you been mm-hmm. at coffees? Well, it sounded like they were only at the motel for like a week or two. No, remember when they were at the motel, it said it had been 30 days at the motel. That's why she had, th- yes, she, they'd been at that motel for okay, a month. Okay. For a month. Cause okay. that's, remember we were like, holy cow, they've already been there a month. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. So then they discuss how much her nails are to get done. And he, she that was is like, insane. $500 or $600 a month to get those nails done. That's crazy. And, and bitch, she, where are you even going? You don't even have a job. Aren't you a nail tech? Yeah, you should be practicing on your own damn nails I and doing that. a client so y'all can get some damn money. I thought she was a nail tech. So she says, you know, look, if you have to go to Texas without me, you can go and you can work work HVAC there and then yes. send me back money to live with coffee. I mean, that sounds like a good plan. Go ahead and get yeah, there. Live, live in the apartment you're paying for. Right. And um, and then he says, yeah, and your cousin just became manager. I rewound uh-huh. that because I was like, her cousin just became manager, became like manager. at the HVAC place. So I wonder if that's why they're moving to Houston, because she's got a cousin that's a manager of an HVAC, so Key Rock can have an assured job. And then they took Key Rock's whole family with them. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. Mm-mm. It doesn't make any sense. But so it is Key Rock and Brittany. So. That's yeah. That mm-hmm. we can agree on. Yeah. Um, and she says, "You just need to go and go ahead and go, so you can make money." And what if I could never go? Like, I mean, you need to go ahead and go. I I may never be able to go. And he goes, baby, we can just elope. We should just get married. And she goes, baby. You know, that's what she wants more than anything in the world. I know. Stop. What? Baby. Mm -hmm. Um, And he goes, because once you're married, you'll have a home to go to with me. Because she, and they're talking heads. She goes, I have to be on the lease of a family member. And if I did that, then legally I would be Key Rock's family member. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, um, and he goes, you know, 
we don't have to tell anybody, you know, we'll just go and get it done. And then we'll do a family wedding later. Mm -hmm. And he says, he goes, I'm only going to go to Texas without you. If you agree to do my plan to go ahead and get married. And she's like, it makes sense to me. It makes sense to me too. But then of course they got to be extra and they got to get a dress and they got to do flowers and they got to actually make it like a wedding. No, you walk your ass to the courthouse and pay your fee and then you're married. That's it. That's it. That's That's it. it. That's what I did. Um, and so he goes, he goes, so he goes, he's going to plan it. He's going to plan it. And he's going to find a dress. She goes, well, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't trust you to find me a dress. Now you just said you had no money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. The last thing you need to be doing is buying a damn wedding dress, paying for flowers. and all. No. Now They're she so goes, young and dumb sometimes. She goes with her friend Shayla to a wedding dress shop. In Old Town, Alexandria, literally one block from my friend Mary's office. Like, what are we doing? It's on Washington Street. It's right in Old Town. Why are we saying this is <laughs> Richmond when these places, you can easily Google them and see they're in Alexandria? So I think it's kind of like where I live. I live in the Leak City, Dickinson area. Mm-hmm. But if someone were to talk about it if or if I was talking to someone else, I'd say Houston. Okay, Richmond is a metropolitan area. Alexandria okay. is a metropolitan. You would not say you live oh, in Dallas. Okay. No. That would be a whole different city. Yeah. 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 So and, like and I say, I say Washington, DC because I'm in the Washington, DC area, just like you would be in the Houston area. Right. Alexandria is not in the Richmond area. It is nowhere near the Richmond area. I don't. So do I'm you so think- annoyed. So I think what it is, is that when they lived in their house, that was Richmond. That was Richmond. And they're so from they Richmond. So they just keep putting Richmond. Yeah. So they just keep putting Richmond. But remember that scary, scary friend that Key Rock had that used to follow Brittany around that had the crazy hair that was terrifying? E- Ebok. Ebok. E- it was E something. Whatever. He was scary. Yeah. Um, He lived in Alexandria because she would say something about when you saw that girl down in Alexandria. When you were with that girl down. Yeah, I uh, remember. Right? Remember yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. Yep. yep, yep, yep. So they've got a lot of connection in Alexandria, and I just gonna have to figure it out. So um so now she goes, they go to this <sighs> right by Wedding my house. Shop. Yeah. So um Shayla says, um, I don't know, you're not doing this the way you want to do it. Like you're not doing the wedding I, the way sh- you want to do it. And she Shayla's goes, he, she goes, he has some kind of control over you, girl. Then Key Rock goes over to Christopher's Flowers, yes. like where I told you, Dave gets flowers all the time. Mm-hmm. And I looked up the owner. We have six mutual friends on Facebook. And so then they've gone to Ellie's Bridal in Washington. I was just so annoyed. Anyway, so it is, <laughs> she puts on a lovely wedding dress. She says her yeah. budget is $600. Mm-hmm. And she goes, but you know, I just feel so bad because like, I wish my mom could come and also my abuela could come and Shayla goes, you really should talk to them about the elopement. Like you should just let them know at least that you're, you're going to have a family wedding later, but you should let them know that you're doing this. Mm-hmm. So then coffee says the same thing to key rock. So key rock mm-hmm. sits down in the flower shop and calls Tammy and gets voicemail. And he just hangs up. He goes, I, pissed off. And he goes, I tried. I tried. I was like, well, you didn't yeah. leave a message. You didn't really try. He's scared. he's scared. Well, he's scared. Tammy got to so, cuss him out. Over at the bridal shop, Brittany comes out in a really nice dress. It's like long and flowy and everything. And they're like, this is too much money. And the dress is for an elopement. It doesn't look like, it doesn't look like a dress for an elopement. It looks like a dress for a big wedding. wedding. Yes. And the dress is $2,000 and her budget is 600. Why did she even put it on? Tell the lady, don't show me. My budget? Yes. Don't don't show me anything over six. By the way, don't show me anything over 100 because I don't have any money. Yeah, she should have got her dress off Amazon. Totally. And it would have looked and just like have, that one. Yes, it would have. Yep. So um, the dress is $2,000, so she, she can't afford it. So Shayla says, I don't understand why you can't still go to Texas and plan for the big wedding. And she was like, well, if we get married now and here, and then we'll be married. And so Texas won't be able to have a problem with two mm-hmm. felons living together. And Shayla goes, but how do you know that? She goes, I'm just like assuming. And Shayla goes, you need to call your PO and find out first and just ask some questions. Like, just ask some questions. Mm-hmm. Now she comes out in a strapless dress. And I thought it looked really good. It looks really good. It looked really yeah. good. We didn't find out how much that one cost, though. Um, but she is wearing it later in the 
think, or did we find yes. out how much it cost? I didn't think we did. No, they didn't say. Mm -hmm. I didn't write it down. I'm assuming it was within budget. That's why no one mentioned how much it costs. Yeah, it looked really good on her. And um, they make up. Now she's in this gown and they make a call to the parole officer. And she says, um, yeah, Key Rock and I are just thinking we're going to elope. We're going to go ahead and get married. And the PO says, you know, the state of Texas is wary of anyone trying to fraud them. Mm -hmm. And I would not recommend that you do this. And she's like, OK, huh, bye. So we'll see. So here's the here's the thing, though. They were planning to get married. It, it wasn't like all of a sudden they're like, let's just get married. They're, they are engaged. They have been living together. All of this. She shouldn't have made that phone call to the probation officer. She should have just yeah. gotten married. But her friend Shayla is such a fucking hater. Like her friend doesn't <laughs> like Key Rock. Shayla the hater. Yeah. Yes, that is exactly. She doesn't like Key Rock. I don't know what I don't know what her problem is. Maybe she wants to lick Brittany herself. I don't know. Okay. But she does. There's something. She just, she was a hater. This She's a hater every time we see her. I know. But, you know, she's a fellow Alexandrian, so I have to be. <laughs> Maybe Brittany is too. Okay. You're going to mm -hmm. mail that girl a pink shade t-shirt, aren't you? No. I don't want to <laughs> wear it on television. <laughs> or maybe I do. <laughs> you do. Wait a minute. Well, let me send it. Let me send her a Libra Lounge one too. Uh, as I said, we just <laughs> make, her, make her a care package. Um, right. Okay. Next time on Life After Lockup, um, Joey says to Kim, what are you doing? God damn, I feel like I'm being lied to. And in the talking mm. heads, he, he says, she got her ex on the back burner. Well, I don't think she does. I just think she just kind of forgot to divorce him. Yeah, she's been too busy chasing your ass around. Right, getting DNA tests and all that. Yeah, so. all that's, that's a lot. That takes up a lot of room in your schedule. And she's a teacher. Well, she's a assistant she's teacher. Eight. Yeah. So it looks like we see um, Zaria and Troy's apartment has burned down. Yeah. I mean, everywhere Zaria goes, something happens. But That's remember, saying. she doesn't know how money just comes to her. It just, well, it ain't coming now. Well, is it is it coming in the form of an insurance payment? Now, why is Zaria doing bad now? Is that what you're saying? Or we're on the show? On the show so far, what we've seen just, yeah. I mean, shit ain't right. Like She shouldn't have spent $1,000 on that damn red tattoo up and down the side of her body. Well, Looks like a burn mark. Looks like a fucking infected burn mark. Maybe that was foreshadowing. Okay. So a, fr a friend goes to the bar where Melissa works and says, did you see the video that Louie posted? She's like, oh my God. Oh. Okay. Who knows? It's just one of his workout videos. Who cares? Yes, maybe, maybe, maybe there's a girl in off. it. Yeah. Maybe there's a girl in it. I think he knows better. I think he knows better. And I think he's really in love with her. He is. Yeah. Who else will put up with that shit? <laughs> Stop. Okay. It's Brittany and Key Rock's wedding. And they don't worry. I'm going to find out exactly where it is. Cause I'm sure it's maybe yeah, it was in my backyard and I didn't even see it. It, it probably <laughs> was while you were gone. They did it in the backyard. Anna, do you mind? We're just going to be out here for an hour. Until don't mind later. We're going to be under right? the basketball hoop. Um, <laughs> And so they're standing at the altar, but she's in that dress. They're standing at the mm -hmm. altar and she goes, babe, I have something to tell you. And, you know, I'm very stressed out. And then she, we see her walk off. So she probably okay. says what she says. She says, um, we got approved by the state of Texas, so we don't have to get married. Do you still want to marry me oh. anyway? And then he says, yes, baby, I do. That's my prediction. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good I have, one. I haven't seen oh, it. Yeah. That's my prediction. That's a good, yeah. Okay. Um. Okay, then we see Bianca walking around crying and going, I don't know where he went. I don't know what I did. <laughs> you well, know, you don't not, know where it's not you, normal. You don't know where a person goes when they're hiding from you, which seems to be <laughs> what he's fucking doing. Yeah, you asked the car with Robert know. and went to take a sex ed class. I mean, that's <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> by the way, Keisha, some fucking shampoo. By the way, Keisha, let me tell you something exciting. When oh. I was in, um, I was in Oxford, Mississippi this weekend, and Kevin Costner mm -hmm. was around. How do you feel? I think about I Kevin saw Costner? that somewhere. Yeah, isn't he? That is it. Didn't he say something about a certain someone that he likes? Who? What? I don't know what. Like presidential wise, Kevin Costner. I thought I, I, I think okay, Kevin's in his way. Yes. Well, what's wrong with Kevin Costner? Nothing's wrong with him. He's hot. Yeah, yeah. I thought you said like someone had an issue with him. I don't have an issue with him. I see. I thought Amy loved him, so I was like, "Ooh, I'm oh, all excited okay. this weekend." I'm gonna tell Amy 
all about how I knew Kevin Costner was going to be in town. I was so excited about it. And then I ended uh-huh. up seeing him a couple of times. I was so excited about it. But Amy's like, why do you think I love Kevin Costner? I was like, cause you love Yellowstone. And she's like, I just love Yellowstone. I don't care about him. Okay, so that's the post I saw, and I thought that meant that Amy did not like him at. Okay, now that makes no, sense. no, no. Okay. Yeah, no. She because I, I was like, Amy Archer doesn't care, but gotcha. I said the other all the other bunkies were like, well, we care. He's hot. Where was he? Um, yeah, Kevin Costner is hot. He was. He looks great. Sixty nine years old. He looks great. You, you know, me and my mom were talking about him not too long ago. We were talking about celebrities that are way older than they look. And he oh. was on that list. And we looked up like, damn, I don't know. Kevin Costner was that old? He looks good. I know. Yeah. yeah. He's got, he got, I think he's got like three sets of kids. I think he's got kids like in the 40s. Then he's got this he's got set. little kids. He's got, he's got this, twins that are young. And he's got this set. And the son is going to yeah. look into Ole Miss next year. And then he's got little ones with that third wife. Yeah, that's that's too many sets of kids. It's a lot of sets I can of only kids. deal with one baby mama. He has that's seven it. kids, is our understanding. Ooh, that's that's a lot. too many. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that he's only two you know away. Me, he's only two you know away me, from, from Montana Mills. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They're gonna do a movie together. <laughs> what is it? What is that? What could be the title of their movie? I I, I, uh, I don't know. Dances with Mills. Movie. So. There you go. There you go. All, the whole soundtrack is going to be all Montana Mills, and maybe Kevin Cost is going to come in like on one song and yeah. do the hook. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that was one thing that was exciting that happened to me this weekend. And another thing that was exciting that happened to me this weekend was I was in the bathroom at the restaurant where I saw Kevin Costner. And the reason I was going to the bathroom was to look at Kevin Costner because that's where his table was. Um, mm-hmm. And I went to the bathroom and there was a girl in there and she was like, are you Mary Payne? Can you believe that? That's always so much. I get embarrassed, but it really is kind of fun. But anyway, her name is Robin and she is a listener, but she, um, she went to Ole Miss, like, you know, my, my people know her people and we ended up talking Mm -hmm. and she was like a tridel and she was, you know, younger than me. So obviously, you know, I didn't, I don't know. I didn't know her, but hi, Robin. super cute, super nice. And I got um, recognized in the bathroom and I talked about it all weekend. I mean, that's big. I mean, uh, when we get recognized, that's kind of big. And, and it's my, worth telling everyone you know about it. I had to tell the whole table and then nobody cared. But um, my husband cared and he thought it was great. Because our husbands, yes. Yes. Our biggest cheerleaders are our husbands. Yes. He was like, oh, gee, that's so great. And then he was like, one time we were at Bellhaven Country Club and a girl came up and knew Mary Payne. And I was like, okay, stop. They keep that. He saw her. Have him and producer James been talking? I mean, really? He's always like, y'all don't even know. I did. Uh, producer James, I got to go watch his show. He's doing a comedy spot tonight. Oh my God. Okay. Well, you have to go. Yes. Okay. You have to go. Okay. Everybody follow the Libra Lounge with Keisha on Instagram. Yes. Listen, listen to Please. her podcast. Your podcast Please. pops up on my mom's podcast feed because she subscribes. Oh to, no. She subscribes to mine and then it'll go other podcasts you might like. And then it, yours comes up and like Amy's and reality gays and you, it, it, because it pulls like the coat and I go, mom, I go, you mm-hmm. don't, you don't want to listen to that. You don't want to listen to that. She did say she likes to hear you on my podcast. She thinks you're very funny. She doesn't care for the language for, for me oh, either. I'm- I'm so, oh God, I'm so sorry. Isn't that funny? Isn't that funny? I was like, no, 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 no. You don't want to listen to that. It's not for the faint of heart. No, God, I would be, I would die. But everybody out there, if you um, don't mind some cursing and some crude jokes, Keisha's the girl for you. She's the girl for you. And I wish you would have told me it was producer James doing comedy. I would have insisted we do this tomorrow. Okay, everybody, follow Keisha, follow me at Pink Shade Pod. And thank you. And I'll be back tomorrow with um, 90 Day Before the 90 Day with Kimberly. Okay, bye. Bye. not read by me, Mary Payne, don't necessarily reflect the views of Pink Shade. If you'd like to listen to ad free, you're going to go on over to Supercast or Patreon and you can find the links to Pink Shade Prime at pinkshadepodcast.com.